Hi everyone. Uh, very nice to be here. So, um, so in this talk, uh, so this uh, high level talk, what I'm trying to do is uh, trying to go through the value proposition for a big data. Uh, so, basically trying to tell if you are, if you are to bring big data into your organization, what could that give you, and uh, kind of what to do and what not to do, what to worry about, kind of a uh, take, right? So, uh, so I this the, I take this from Google Trends. So this tells the story of big data in very interesting ways, right? So you could see Hadoop come in off in 2007, 8, etc., right? You could see that. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. So you could see the NoSQL come in, uh, it taking off suddenly, actually it get a little bit slow down. Then the later, uh, sorry, the big data come in, that's the blue one, so the big data taking off. So the Hadoop, then the big data taking off. Then the later things like IoT and the data science come in. IoT is almost up with big data now, right? Okay, so. So, so what this shows is, okay, I mean, it's almost three, four years since the big data start to like be around and people are talking about that, right? So, so these are some of these technologies, right? So there's search, there's NoSQL technologies, there are distributed file systems, batch processing, Hadoop, et cetera. The new things, real-time analytics, predictive analytics, visualizations, et cetera. So the sum of these are very, very mature. So uh, I'll share the size, but the, what I'm saying is, do we know kind of, uh, is it work right now? I think most of them do, right? And do we understand how to use it? Because some of these technologies, people are still trying to see what that means, where it applies, et cetera. And uh, third is the ultimate test, do we understand the complication of running it in production, right? Because it is not simple and these are questions like what happened when there errors, how do you keep updating and so on and so forth, right? So you could see that technologies like search, visualizations, distributed file systems, batch processing, etc., like are very, very mature versus some of these technologies are comparatively new, okay? so. Okay, so then uh, another interesting question after three, four years, okay, is it real? Do you have uh, like things that you could point to saying that it did, right? Because the thing about these hypes, I'm saying with big data is that you have a lot of sin people talk about what it would do. You wouldn't find that many uh, that would do what it had done. So these are some of these, right? So the first is, uh, I won't go through everything, but I'll point out to you. Uh, first is Moneyball, this is a movie. Okay, who has watched it? Okay, most of you have, right? So the, the idea is that the, uh, in this, uh, this uh, very comparatively poor team, using very small budget, they go and basically win. What they do is they use um, big data and data analysts to figure out the real worth of a player, right? So that's, a, that's a one of the very, uh, very publicized, very early ex, uh, examples. Then the guy called Nate Silver, in 2014, 2008, he predicted 49 out of 50 US presidential elections uh, seats. Right? Uh, I mean, if you, uh, if you know a little bit of stats, you know, I mean, okay, so it's like this. Uh, okay, given uh, uh, like say presidential election, who wins? I can randomly pick. I have 50% chance of being successful, right? But to get 49 out of 50, if you do the chance of that, that's like, uh, that's very, very, very small of getting it right. So that's kind of a sign it's working. Then uh, last one, the third one. So this is a very interesting study they did. What they did was they took uh, biopsy data 
uh, and check basically uh, search for uh, patterns in the data that are telltale signs of a cancer. Right, and the, the, the analysis found 12 patterns, right? And it turns out, out nine of them we knew about. Other three, the doctors, have, they didn't know, right? And they were true though, right? So that's again tells like there is something real about this, right? So uh, let me move on. So, so the point is, yes, it looks like there's something in it. Right? So, uh, the, if you think about what's the premise of big data, what it says is that, I mean, the, the, the rough version sounds like this, right? So, collect uh, all the data about your organization, feed it to big data, it will give you a lot of insights. Okay? So, I mean, you hear a version of this, right? Uh, so, so the one uh, very important thing is to realize uh, an underlying assumption of this statement is that there are a lot of inefficiencies around uh, you uh, that you can't improve because you don't know the fact that there are a lot of information available would let you do it better, right? We, that's the underlying assumption, which is uh, it is pretty fair assumption, right? Okay, so however. Uh, okay, so this basically, this mode of thinking thinks that the one is that if you identify what's the problem, it can be fixed, right? Uh, but I think the if, if it is optimization problem, you need to be aware it only works for cases where it's worth optimizing. So, so basically, like for example, okay, what it kind of says like if I get all the data and just analyze it, uh, that might not necessarily uh, lead to insights or big difference, right? So, uh, the, what that kind of means is you need to pick a pain point and try to find data about it and then try to analyze it, etc. Just randomly picking the data that you easiest to find. I mean, you might get lucky, right? But uh, that not necessarily means you will get a lot of insight, right? So I'm sure you have heard the like term like cloud washing, etc. So uh, like now, uh, it's like this, right? If you are, if your CEO come and ask you, uh, are we doing big data? And you said no, and say okay, before the end year end, I want to be doing big data. Right? And if you want to tick the, it says yes, okay, this is how you do it. Right? So you collect the data that's easiest to collect, right? And uh, you put together and draw some charts that are easiest to draw. You, sorry, you pick some uh, machine learning algorithm, you predict something, uh, etc. I mean, it's not that hard to get the pretty pictures and like, and have some chart and have some machine learning predicting what happened next, so on and so forth, right? So, uh, I mean, now the tools are, it, it, even that was pretty hard before, but now the tools are pretty good, so you could do it in, uh, I mean, okay, 24 hours, so on and so forth, right? However, that, that I mean, you might get lucky, but that wouldn't always give you a uh, lot of returns, right? So, so you have to make sure you have the right data, you have to look at it in enough details, right, etc. So, so, okay, so, so, so these are some of the, th I won't go through each one of them, right, so what they can, these are some of the example problems they can, big data can solve, right, it's, uh, this about optimizing things, this about understand your customers, like the Sibyl went through like long series of examples in the morning, right? So etc. Right? So 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 uh, so to actually effectively use big data, right? To really make a difference, you first of all you need to understand. These are some of the tools that you have in your arsenal, right? Let I'll I'll go through them in very 
briefly. I don't go to the uh, technology, not to the too much detail. If you want to hear that part, there's another talk I give tomorrow. Uh, basically, it, it's, that's very technical, right? This, only, this tells the value proposition why they are there, right? So what I would do is I will go through this, right? Then I would try to explain how would, uh, if you are trying to actually get something worth out of big data, how would you want to think about putting these things together? Okay, so the first thing, KPIs. So uh, you might have heard, uh, I, if this, I think even this even true now, people who mine, when you go into a mine, you take a canary, right? Because the ca uh, canary is a small bird, right? So uh, because they are very sensitive to oxygen, so if your uh, oxygen level drops, Right? They would uh, like knock out very, very fast before you. So if you know the canary knocks out, you should be running out. Right? So the KPIs are canaries for your business. So the KPIs are some, oh, sorry, KPIs are some numbers right, that describes how your system is doing. Right? There are, these are very, uh, countries have numbers like that. GDP, per capita income. HDI, these are numbers that explains in a number, in very concise form, how, you are, how a country is doing. Similarly, each organization, each business would have your KPIs. And I mean, if you are a serious organization, you would already have them, right? So, so, so the, the f very important thing if you are trying to use big data is to know the KPIs. Right? Because the end of the day, what you want to do is to monitor those KPIs. Now, uh, the, you might be already using these KPIs. If you don't, your domain, uh, you are working, other people may already have defined KPIs, or it may be that you might have defined your own KPIs, which is not always easy, right? But, uh, but they, this is the starting point, right? Because the KPI kind of tells you what matters, right? But one thing about the KPI is that they wouldn't tell whole story, so you would need multiple indications. For example, if you take a country, GDP doesn't tell the like human uh, how the human values, so there's a different indicator for that. Similarly, you would need multiple indicators that tells multiple parts of the story, right? So, so that's the KPIs. The second one is the dashboard. I'm sure you have heard this word, but if you, when you are thinking a dashboard, you should be thinking about your car dashboard, right? That's where this comes from. The, the, the goal of the car a dashboard or a car dashboard is to be very, very boring when everything is good. And only jump and flash at you when something is wrong, right? That's the purpose of a dashboard. When you drive, Right? You would glance at it, you want to know everything is good or bad in a second. Right? That's, and we all know we don't need any ex excitement from our car dashboard. Right? That means like half a day at the garage. Right? So, so that's, that's the goal. So when you set up a dashboard, that's what you're trying to attain. It's something that in a glance tells you how the organization is doing. Right? If everything is good, it is boring. Right, which is expected. Third one is alerts, right? So the alerts are, the, the goal of alerts is give you peace of mind. It basically stop you having to go and check the dashboard every time, right? So the, uh, the good alerts should be very, very specific, should be infrequent, because then otherwise people will ignore it, right? Uh, as, and uh, uh, should should have very low false positives, and generally I will I'll talk about that later. You should let the end users control how much sensitive it is, because otherwise, uh, if there are too many, I mean nobody. Okay, we are all humans. We can't live in constant state of alert, right? So if you send too much, people just put your bar and they would ignore it, right? So so uh, so you need to worry about that. 
So uh, then, when you come to here, another important point is that uh, when you hear the high level big data story and the vision, you might think that, okay, I have my organization, I have put a big data system, this would magically make decisions and run and everything would, I mean, you go and sleep forever. Uh, that might be possible, but not right now, not for another 10 years. We won't get singularity in, uh, soon, right? So, uh, so, so you need human in the loops most of the cases. So there are very specific cases where you could automate both in algorithmic trading and in war, if other side automate, you don't have a choice, right? You have to automate because otherwise you are you anyway lost. So, and uh, so, and also when you show advertisement, I mean, if you show the wrong ad, I mean, what's the deal, right? Fine. So, uh, so, so there are certain cases that you could use this, but if there are serious consequences of making a wrong decision, you need humans in the loop. Okay, at least for next few years, right? So uh, then, the uh, so when then for humans to make the decision, they need to be able to understand where what's the context of whatever the things happening, and know and to be able to drill down. For example, if there is an alert and I go to the dashboard. Right? If it says that, okay, uh, sales, on, sales is less, you need to be able to go into the detail and find out what is the problem. I mean, uh, so of course your first version might, it might be he has to do a lot of phone calls to figure it out. But the, the goal is to, a, to be able for him to do it from that uh, system itself. Uh, so then, I'm sure you have heard about the term, term real-time analytics. The goal of that is to be generate alerts at the right time. There's a lot of exciting technology, there's a lot of things, I'll talk about that tomorrow, but whole point is you, you detect conditions very, very fast, within seconds to milliseconds, so that you could react to it very, very fast. Okay? And the predictive analytics, uh, this is a technology that le could learn from examples, right? Isabel talk about this in the morning. Uh, so, so example, uh, let's say you want, uh, so when you learn to program, you would actually think that you could program anything. Not true, because if you, I ask you to uh, write a program that drives the car, uh, it's very, very hard, actually, almost impossible because there are a lot of, lot of edge conditions. So the only way those kind of problems, that versus the character recognition, so on and so forth, the way to solve it is that you give a lot of examples and tell, uh, please figure this out. Uh, generate a program, which we call a model, that, that, general, that learn from these examples and generate similar results. This is machine learning, right? So they could do things like predict the next value, right? Uh, decide the category of users, so on and so forth, right? Again, they could be very, very powerful. They are a little bit hard to use, right? Uh, but again, where they fit within the experience is that they might predict a trend line in the, in the visualization you see, or they might try to predict and send you an alert if something is going wrong, et cetera, right? So it is also within the uh, part of that story, right? So, uh, so this is, now, if you, so, okay. Now, if you are trying to make some use of big data, right? This is how it generally work, right? You have a data set, right? Somebody exploit, right? Define KPIs, okay? So basically this stage, you take a one data set, you play with it, right? Then when you know what, what, when you know what is useful, when you know what is the KPIs, then you would go into 
collect the data, right? You do all this analysis, dashboard, alerts, etc. The important point is that this part, whatever inside that box, right, they are run in production. It is this part is very, very expensive. Right? This means a lot of investments, running things in here, you uh, like instrument a lot of things, so on and so forth, right? So okay. Okay, so before you like set up systems, before you uh, uh, like put sensors, and before you invest a lot, you need to look at the data, right? You get a data set, play with it, right? Hire expert, expert if you must, right? But try to figure out what is the scenarios that helps you. Because if you blindly go and set up something in production and think that I will figure out the scenario later, and you might get lucky, right? But but the the, the whoever the uh, so, uh, but the people who are waiting on you might run out of their, you know, their patient, right? Okay, so, so these are kind of ways you can do uh, big data projects, right? So you, I might have existing data set, I, will, I kind of try to figure out, uh, like do something useful with it, right? Or I can choose to uh, like go and instrument all my process in detail as possible collect the data and figure out a use for it, right? Or I can like, try to find a lot of correlation between data, so on and so forth. However, when you, if you are starting, I mean, if you have this system up and running, you can do all this other version. If you are starting, if you are pitching it for the first, if you are doing the first deployment, start with this. Take your time, find out a problem that can really make a difference for the organization, right? And take the pain to collect the data, understand the, whether it will work, right? And then make that scenario work, right? And the chances are that the, that scenario would pay, just justify all the cost you did for that. Then it's a very easy, easy thing to, I mean, you would also understand what works, what doesn't work, what works for in your case, etc. Right? So be very, very specific. Right? So the idea of all those things are actionable insights. Right? So it is not that interesting to say that, uh, okay, you are only walking, say, 2,000 steps per day or whatever. Right? But it is, it is much more interesting if you can tell that, or oh, you are walking uh, 2,000 steps per day, However, our, the, on, on average, a normal human wa walks, say, 5,000. Therefore, you, ha you might have 70% more chance of having a heart attack within five years. That is very concrete data. Right? So the point is, when you present the data, I and mean, you do this when you define the KPIs to most extent. The point is that when you put the data out, to the whoever looking at that, put it in the form that he can make decisions. He can act on that. Right? And then think very, very deeply how this is being used. Right? So this is the normal use case. You either look at the dashboard and find something, you either, you would receive either otherwise you receive alert. Right? Then within that, you would want to see. Okay, that's alert, you want to see what happens. Maybe things around it, right? Then you want to drill down and find out what's happened, right? Then you want to know what's the, uh, like how sure about system on, about what it's saying. Then you might want to act, right? And sometimes this, whatever the system tell may be wrong and you, the user might want to give you feedback. And you might want to incorporate that into your system, right? Okay, so uh, okay, so let me uh, so okay, so then when you get the one scenario running, then you need to do this continuously, right? You want to set up a system. You want to make sure data continuously feed into that, right? You want to keep having the dashboard. If you have machine learning models, etc., you want to 
like keep updating so have them at right time, etc. That is very complicated things, right? Those can be done, but start small. So let me skip these next, sorry, next two slides, okay? So, uh, and wrap up, right? So uh, the first take home is that big data provide a way for you to optimize, okay? So that's the point. The reason you be bring in big data is that the first A, you assume there are a lot of inefficiencies around, that if you get more visibility into what's going on, you could fix those, right? And these are some of the tools that big data make available to you. So the, it's, it's, uh, you are responsible to put them in together into a solution that solves your problem. And then start small, okay? And, uh, and try out things before take it to produc like production and go to the experience model, right? And the end of the day, find a high impact problem, right? That would make a difference to you and make it work end to end, okay? Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.